Good evening, everyone. Thank you all for logging in. Let us begin, as we always do with Bishop Gurton, and open everything with a prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for bringing us all together tonight. We thank you for so many things over the course of the season, and especially now, and for, you, for our continued help and safety for us and those close to us. We know you do not give us more than we can handle and have faith in you to bring us through safely in our time of global turmoil. Through the love and inspiration of Jesus and Mary, we grow each day to be better people and to care for those we love and those less fortunate than us. We ask you to continue to bless us tonight and in the future, and we give thanks for all of your great glory. We ask this in the name of Christ's great love, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So here we are, everyone tucked in their own rooms, but we tonight is also the culmination of our winter season. In some ways, it's, it's made us realize how important all of us are to one another. And we are certainly in some, in some uncharted territory, both for athletics, school, and the way our nation will run here, now, and into the future. So while our format has changed drastically, we all can't be together to celebrate our winter team's accomplishments. The appreciation and the sentiment certainly has not diminished. As we begin, I would like to pass along the congratulations of both President Linda Broder and Principal Jason Strinisty. Jason has been an absolute rock and workhorse in making sure BG will not and has not missed a beat through all of this uncertainty. We certainly are on the forefront of online learning in the state and dare I say across the nation. And much of that credit goes to him, Mr. Fitzgibbons, Mrs. Posnanski, but truly the entire school community and those who have bonded together in this global crisis. So tonight we take some time to celebrate and recognize our winter sports teams. And boy, oh boy, do we, have, do we have a lot to celebrate. In the winter season where we have 14 teams that are competing as a school, we earn four state championship titles. Boys alpine skiing, boys swimming and diving, wrestling, and girls basketball. And lest we forget, they are the students from whom we ask so much from over the course of the season, both in terms of their various other endeavors, band, mock trial, campus ministry, as well as donating time to, to several local charities. This is false. All of that maintaining the highest academic standards of any school in the state. If you go into the field house, you'll see many state championship banners. This year, this season, we'll be adding 18 individual championships. And again, four championship banners will be placed into the gym. So yes, it's been a truly another remarkable and historic season. So as each coach is called to present their awards, turn to their screen and they will be asked to share one small tidbit about the season and about the individuals that they are honoring here tonight. So let's begin. We all will start off with Caitlin Metzger, our outstanding athletic trainer, and she is here virtually, as always, to present the Safe Sports Network Apple NHMI Comeback Player of the Year. Come in, Kate. Thank you, Pete. So first, I just want to say, hope all of you guys are doing well. Hope everyone's staying healthy. Um, and on behalf of me and Sarah, we miss you guys so much. And it's really hard to be an athletic trainer without athletes or sports. So we can't wait until everything's back to normal. Um, so tonight I'm presenting the Safe Sports Network Perseverance Award. So for those who don't know, Safe Sports is a local nonprofit that provides athletic trainers and medical coverage to several local high schools and youth leagues. This award recognizes an athlete who suffered an injury but was able to come back and excel in their sport this season. This season's winner suffered a high ankle sprain during his preseason wrestling jamboree. Hope Unlike a normal ankle sprain, um, and on behalf of me and this type of injury generally takes and it's really hard to be an athletic trainer without There's some feedback. 
Um, unlike a normal ankle sprain, this type of injury generally takes a lot longer to heal and the recovery is much more difficult. But over the next four weeks, he continued to impress us with how quickly he was progressing. He saw us every day for rehab. and was always the hardest worker in the room. Even on days when we had 30 other athletes that needed our help and attention, he would come in, he knew what needed to be done. He was extremely self-sufficient um, and just made our lives so much easier that day. After almost a month, this athlete was able to return to the mat and immediately started his winning streak in his first match back. Um, this athlete had an undefeated regular season and he continued to find success into the postseason. At the Division II State Championships, he recorded his 100th career win. He became the 145 pound Division II State Champ and he also helped his team to win the Division II State title. Um, from there, he attended the Meet of Champions and was crowned the overall state winner for his weight class. He then completed at New England's where he had a great showing and qualified for nationals, which unfortunately were postponed due to everything else going on. Um, overall, he's the perfect example of what this award is all about. And he's very deserving of some, some recognition for all of his hard work. So this year's Perseverance Award goes to Zach Rio. So congrats, Zach. Back to you, Pete. Thank you, Kate. So our first coach up this evening to present their major team awards is Danielle Fisher. So I'll hand the baton over to Danielle and make the awards to boys and girls indoor track. Thank you, Peter, for making our... Can you hear me, Peter? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Peter, for making our sports awards happen on this virtual platform, as it's important for our winter athletes to be known and honored for their accomplishments this season. I want to thank my coaches, Bruce, Bill, John, and Kurt for sharing their time and expertise with our team. And I want to thank the entire track team for giving us 100% of your effort, showing up, having fun, and committing yourself to your own goals as well as your teammates' goals. I think Many of us will agree that we need to cherish every season we have together more than ever now, knowing what we know today about the uncertainty of another sports season. To my track athletes, you know how I feel about endurance, to suffer something painful or unpleasant patiently without giving way or giving in. It's something we are faced with now to endure and wait patiently for this time to pass. But as you wait, keep your goals alive. Your dreams may be deferred, but don't let them be denied. The boys team improved their meet finishes this season with top scorers in Jacob Pacheco, Joey Lupo, Toby Therian, Ethan Holt, Duncan Primus, and Alex. All six of these boys made the qualifying standards for the state championship, the highest number of qualifiers we've had in a very long time. Jacob in the 55 dash, 55 hurdles and high jump, Toby in shot put and high jump, Joey in 55 dash, 300 meter and long jump, Ethan in high jump, Alex in 3K and Duncan in 1K. And it was also our four by 200 meter relay team of Jacob, Ethan, Toby and Joey who had a top seed coming into the state meet. As few players as we had, these boys could score some serious points in many events across the board. This year's coaches award. This athlete made all practice in, in meets. He worked hard while at practice and improved his times this season in competition, which many other athletes on the team did as well. But what made this athlete stand out this season was his desire to be counted on, or maybe I should say to be called upon. His enthusiasm for racing on the track was clear. He didn't have the speed of the other legs, no pun intended, but he definitely had the heart. When we needed him for relay, he was ready for the opportunity and emphatically said yes. He reached one of his goals this season by qualifying for the state meet in the thousand with a big personal best. He was one of the few sophomores to run a qualifying standard this season. So big things to come in his future on the track. Duncan Primus is this year's coaches award. Congrats, Duncan. Our rookie award. I had heard about this athlete when he first arrived at BG. Everyone kept telling me that he was the fastest kid in the school. Every season I waited for him to come out for track and was disappointed when I didn't see him on the registration list. Finally, this winter track, we got to witness by far one of the most talented athletes that I have coached. This senior could jump, 
in sprint with little to no experience and made it to the top seeds in all his events. He was the anchor leg for the four by 200 meter relay team, which counted on his amazing closing speed to finish the job. Even though track is not his primary sport, he sure made it feel like it was his number one sport. He dedicated himself to learn as much as he could about track and field this season. It was a truly a pleasure coaching him. This year's rookie award goes to Joey Lupo. Congrats, Joey. In our last boys award, this senior has continued to improve every season, getting stronger, faster, and more skilled in his technical events. This season, he made the qualifying standards in the 55 dash, 55 hurdles, high jump, and was a significant leg on the four by 200 meter relay. He is a New Hampshire All-State as he's the best high jumper in division one in the state, winning the high jump at the division one championship. Also, on his own time, he committed to pole vault training by consistently working on improving his skill and competing in open meets for pole vault in addition to his busy high school meet schedule. Not only is Jacob an exceptional athlete as he trains as a decathlete, he's also one of the finest young men I have ever coached. He is the utmost respect for his coaches and his teammates and is more than willing to go the extra mile for anyone. This year's MVP is Jacob Chico. Congrats, Jacob. On to the girls track team. The girls team had another incredible season. They were ranked all winner as one of the best teams in New Hampshire with our outstanding middle distance roster. Our sprint relay team came along very well this season making huge improvements in their times with dedication to handoff exchanges. In our field events, Alicia made it to the state meet and shot put with a personal best. Chloe also qualified for the state meet after being sidelined with injury early season and Grace Jones dominated long jump as the number one seed in division one. We had three all state winners in Grace Jones, Fiona Doherty and Caroline Toll. At our state meet, we placed fourth scoring points was the four by eight relay team comprised of Caroline Toll, Elizabeth White, Mary Kate Finn and Fiona Doherty. They had a runner up finish. Caroline Toll was our state title winner in the 3K and third in the 1500 meter. And Grace Jones was runner up in the long jump and Fiona in the thousand and Grace O'Malley in the 55 hurdles racking up more points in our individual events. This year's coaches award. This season, this athlete proved to be the rock of the team with her unwavering support of her teammates, her dedication to her relay team and her commitment to her training. Accountable to all practices, she brought enthusiasm with her to the workouts, even when we were doing long intervals. She was honest about not enjoying them in their entirety, but she grinded them out with 100% effort. At times she would confide in us that she was nervous about the workouts or the tough competitions, but you would never know as her big smile hit all her uncertainties. She truly is a leader on this team and will be a loss next year when she sets off for her collegiate track ambitions. This year's coach's award is Alasia Linton. Congratulations, Alasia. Our rookie this season, we are very fortunate to have this athlete to come out for the team as she had no plans to compete in winter track. When we approached her about her possibility of competing, she willingly jumped at the opportunity, making it to practices and meets when she was not on the slopes. She ran on both relay teams as she proved to have one of the fastest 200 and 400 meter times. She's a national and picked up the 55 hurdles immediately. Every meet she improved on her time and being very coachable, she worked on whatever element of the hurdles that needed sharpening. She not only made it to the state championship, she raced on our four by 400 meter relay team and she placed fifth in the 55 hurdles with the personal best scoring points for our team. This year's rookie goes to Grace O'Malley. Congratulations, Grace. This athlete is just an incredibly versatile athlete. She can sprint, jump, run middle distance and perhaps throw, although that has yet to be explored. She is wholeheartedly devoted to track and field persistently fine tuning her long jump technique and sprinting form. She says yes to everything we ask of her and performs each challenge with 100% of her ability. She consistently scores at all of our meets in her individual events, 55 dash, long jump, 300, 600, as well as she takes on back-to-back -back relays without hesitation. At the state meet, she was placed runner up in the long jump and six in the 300. Also raced on both relay teams running the fastest leg in her last event, the four by four. It is a pleasure working with this New Hampshire All-State athlete as she is humble and seeks honest feedback as she tries to become the best in track and field. This year's most valuable player of the season is Grace Jones. Congratulations, Grace. 
Back to you, Peter. Great, thank you, Danielle. Next, I'll ask Coach Aaron Fitzgibbons to come on screen and make the award presentations to the member of the bowling team. All right, thank you, Peter. Hopefully you can all hear me. This year has been about new beginnings. This is my first year as head coach. We moved to a new venue at Bolero in Lowell. We welcomed the new assistant coach, Mr. Mike O'Brien, as well as saw the, assist, the addition of six new members of the team, being seniors Tom Tomas gonzalez Ugasti, juniors Joel Naka and Benny Simino, and freshman Angelina Turcott. Everyone hear me okay? Freshman Angelina Turcott, Derek Rebel, and Shayla Conley. But a team is only as strong as its roots. And we wouldn't have been successful without the return of seniors, of seniors Katie Almeida, Brett Daniel, Josh Prasad, and juniors Brandon Wilcox, Ethan O'Brien, Jack Sayuarez, and Jamie Horgas. We also welcome back after being away for a year, Mr. Bob Longo as assistant coach. They say a good leader surrounds themselves with great people, and that was apparent when it came to the coach to Coach O'Brien and Coach Mondo. Both brought so much to the team, and I couldn't have done it without their support, knowledge, and experience. Thank you to your commitment to the team. I also want to take a moment to thank Mr. Palladino for his support of me and the team this season. He put a lot of faith in me, and I hope I was able to live up to that. When we set out the season, we had one goal to get back to the state championships, which we had missed last year, finishing outside of the top 10. Through hard work and training, I'm happy to say that we accomplished that goal. We were the team that just kept on going. Bowling is broken out into two rounds. The first round has, was two games of regular bowling where five members bowl and the five scores are added up and the then the teams are seated based on the totals up for the second round, which is called Baker which is when all five bowlers bowl in a single game where each bowler bowls two frames of bowling. So essentially five people working as one. This is truly where our team shined and throughout the season impressed other teams with their ability to bowl very high games with several 200 plus series games in a season and a high of 234 against Goffstown. While we didn't win states, we learned a lot this year and I'm extremely proud of the team and all they accomplished. It was a great season and we will carry this momentum into next year. The Most Improved Bowler Award is awarded to a bowler who showed significant improvement over the course of the season. For this bowler, I saw a huge improvement. When Benny first started the season, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know what to think. I'd known Benny for a few years and I figured he was just coming to bowl with his friends and have social fun, and that he did. He came to have a good time, but I think that was part of his drive to get better. Benny started the season bowling at the JV level and had a 95 average for the first week. Benny saw his objective, which was to be able to bowl varsity and be able to bowl with his varsity friends. Week after week, Benny's scores improved and by the mid season, he was bowling in the 145 range. And I remember him asking when he could bowl varsity. In week nine of our 10 week season, he got that opportunity again in week 10. The final accomplishment was that Benny went from a 95 average in, in week one to a season average of 135, which is a 40 point increase and between week six and 10, he averaged 145, with his last game of the season being a high of 200. With all those improvements, Benny not only made varsity, but earned himself a varsity starting spot in the state championships. Congratulations, Benny, on a job well done. The most valuable player award is given to a bowler who, is, who has the season high average. This bowler traditionally bowls in the fourth or fifth Baker position and is really the anchor of the team. This is a bowler that we can count on consistently to be on their game and keep their cool under pressure. Being the fifth bowler in a Baker round means that, that they will bowl the last frame of each game, which can often be the difference between winning and losing. This year's MVP is no different. He bowled a season average of 185 over the 20, 20 games in the season, and in Baker quite often threw three strikes in a row in the 10th frame to ensure victory, to victory during several close matches. Individually, he finished in the top 20 in the state out of over 200 bowlers. If he doesn't know this already, this year's bowling MVP is junior Jamie Horgas. Congratulations, Jamie. Can't wait to see what you do next year. Now the coaches award. This award is given to a bowler who we, the coaches, truly feel represents the best of the team. This bowler may not be on top every week, but they put their all into the team, supporting others, bring great attitude, and to me really serves as the cornerstone of the program. This year's recipient of the Coaches Award is Katie Almeida. 
Katie has been with the team since her sophomore year, brought in by Josh, senior Josh Prasad, who was a sophomore then. I felt that Katie, I first met Katie at an outside bowling event where she was training and learning more about the sport. Katie continued to practice and worked on her game. And, but what we appreciated most about Katie was her willingness to work with others. By junior and senior year, Katie was our go-to for working with our new bowlers, leading drills and being a role model for the team. Katie became the keeper of our most beloved cr mascot crush and we was made sure, and she made sure that it was with us every week at matches, as well as she helped to inspire the other bowlers. Katie's positive attitude, great smile, team leadership is what made her stand out on this team. And I know we not have had a successful season without all of Katie's dedication. So when it came time to decide, there really was no debate. Katie was the choice. On behalf of Coach Longo, Coach O'Brien, and myself, congratulations, Katie. You'll be greatly missed next year. Thank you, team for such a great season. To all my seniors, thank you as well. Whether you've been with me for the past four years or just started this year, you played a huge part in this team and you'll be greatly missed. For the underclassmen, I expect that once the alleys open again, sometime after May, to see you in the lanes getting ready for next year. It's time for BG to bring home the championship. Before I finish up, I wanna send out a shout out to all my parents who are our super fans this year. No matter if we were in Lowell at home or Claremont on the road, I could always count on having the greatest group of super fans cheering on the team. I couldn't have asked for a greater group, always there to jump in and lend a hand when they needed, when needed. And even if I wasn't near the lane bowling, I could always tell if we were doing good or bad because I could hear the cheering from across the alley. I also wanna thank Mr. Duprat for making sure that I had that small bus every week to get to practices, uh, having it made life so much easier because a lot of my bowlers couldn't drive and it just ensured that we could really grow our program. I also want to thank Mrs. Broder for her continued work with the NHIA to support all of the programs, especially a program like this where all le levels of athletes can participate. And I also want to thank Mr. Stransky for coordinating this evening's event and his support of the program and to all the faculty, staff, and administration who came out to see us this season. Finally, I want to thank Mr. Jackson. Seven years ago, he took, this he took time to start this team. Through his dedication and work with that small group of bowlers, he paved the way for the program that we've continued to grow. Even though he wasn't with us on the lane this year, he still watched the scores every week and was popping in and out of my office to talk about what, we, what, he, what was happening at the matches and still worried about what was going on. Thank you for your time. I hope you have a great rest of your evening and I look forward to getting back to BG and seeing you all in person again. Back to you, Mr. Palladino. Nice bow. Great. Thank you, Aaron. I'm glad you liked it. It's, it matches your, your color. <laughs> And now I'd like to call upon Coach Elizabeth Viola to present the major awards to the members of the cheerleading spirit squad. Hi, can you hear me okay? All right, we'll go for it. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Elizabeth Viola, and with me tonight, well, through Zoom, is Erin O'Connell. So Erin, make sure you give a wave. I would like to start off by personally thanking the faculty and administration for all of their continued support throughout this year. We are honored to be able to present our awards this evening. When thinking about our winter season, I know that I speak for everyone when I say that it was not only a season of many accomplishments, but one that also exemplified the true meaning of teamwork. They came together when people needed it the most and showed the importance of never giving up on each other or themselves. We just can't say it enough. These young women and athletes were such a blessing and we truly did become a family. This season we were able to accomplish so much and did this even through adversity that we faced during our season. There was no greater feeling as a coach than seeing these amazing young ladies work together as a team and truly show their commitment to our program and be the leaders of BG that I knew they could be. We placed seventh out of 15 teams at our prelims competition, which is quite an accomplishment considering most of the schools we are competing against are twice the size of BG. It was uh, such a wonderful team and season to be part of and we will always cherish the moments that we shared together as a team. The award that we're presenting tonight is the Dedication Award. Tonight, this award is going to two athletes who, emb who embodied every quality that a Bishop Girton cheerleader should have. Our first athlete is someone who was always ready and willing to try anything for the sake of the team. She understood the importance of being a team player and a leader for our program. She participated in BG cheerleading all four years, but her contribution to the team was so much more than that. She worked so hard throughout her time as a BG cheerleader, and without her awesome basing skills, we would not have had the success and team that we had this year. 
Our first dedication award goes to Caroline Abrams. So um, the next dedication award is going to an athlete who continuously worked hard at every practice and every game. During her time at BG, this athlete experienced a tough energy injury that sidelined her for the majority of her four years here at BG. Rather than allowing the injury to stop her, she continued to become such an important member of our cheerleading family. She showed the true meaning of never giving up. Her love for her team and for the sport really shined through because she was always someone who supported her teammates and encouraged them both on and off the mat, even when she couldn't compete for most of her high school career. This is everything you want from an athlete and a team player. In her last season, she was finally able to compete with her teammates, and this truly reminded me what coaching was all about. Seeing someone not give up and stick with a sport that she loved, even if she only had one season to compete. This year's other dedication award goes to Jenna Chadbourne. Thank you guys for such a wonderful season, and you truly will be missed. Back to you, Peter. Thank you, Elizabeth. A little wardrobe malfunction here. Uh, Coach Jody Chesley is also joined us this evening, and it's my pleasure to introduce her to make the team award presentations to the girls' gymnastics team. Are you guys able to hear me? My screen's frozen, but I'm going to try anyways. <laughs> okay, we can hear you. Okay, <laughs> can you guys see me? No? Yes. Okay, hi everyone. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Jody Chesley, the gymnastics coach. And this next to me is our number one fan, Lincoln. This year, I've had the opportunity to coach an amazing group of young ladies that work hard and push each other to be the best they can be. The camaraderie between these young ladies is outstanding and they have been a pleasure to coach. This year, the gymnastics team placed first at three of their competitions and finished sixth in the state. The first award I'm gonna give out tonight is the coaches award. This award will be going to Vanshika Dower. Vanshika is our senior captain this year and has competed for the BG gymnastics team all four years of her high school career. The progress I've seen Vanshika make from freshman to senior year has been so much fun to watch. She has not only progressed as a gymnast, but has grown into an amazing young lady. Her dedication to the BG gymnastics team is commendable and we are truly going to miss her next year. Congratulations, Vanshika. The second award I'm going to give out tonight is Rookie of the Year. This award is gonna to go to Rachel Bulger. Rachel had an outstanding first year with the BG Gymnastics team and she worked hard and learned many new skills this season. Rachel was one of our top scorers for the team and she placed 13th in the state. Rachel also qualified for regionals. I'm excited to see what the next three years, years will bring for Rachel. Congratulations. The third and final award I'm going to give out tonight is the MVP award. The MVP award this year is going to Sarah St. Lawrence. Sarah is a junior on our team who works extremely hard and leads by example. Sarah scored the most points for our team during the regular season this year, and I can always count on her to be consistent and clean during competitions. Sarah placed 16th in the state and qualified for regionals. Her commitment to our team is commendable. I'm excited to see what her senior year has in store for her. Congratulations, Sarah. I'm very proud of all my gymnasts this year and wish there was time to talk about each and every one of them. They each brought something special to the team and together they formed a family. I'm grateful for the opportunity that I've had to coach, that I've had to coach such an amazing team. Congratulations and on a great season this, this year, ladies. Thank you. Thanks again, Jody. Next up, Gary Bishop, head coach of the boys ice hockey team to make the presentations to his team. Gary, take it away. Uh, you, you. Thanks, Pete. Go right ahead, Gary. I'm trying. We can hear you. Okay, Pete. First of all, I'd like to start by thanking Mrs. Broder, Mr. Sternesty, yourself, and the entire faculty and staff at Bishop Girton. I would also like to thank my four, my three assistants, Mark Mantone, James Devlin, and Brian D. Police. <clears throat> I'd also give a special thanks to our eight seniors, Ben Young, Aaron Pratt, Pat Madden, Max Trawick, 
Sean Wilson, Evan Butler, Chris Sullivan, and Nolan Neely. Again, we had a very successful season this year. We finished sixth in the regular season standings. We went on to revenge our early season loss against Exeter to get our way, way into the semifinals where we lost to Bedford, who was eventually crowned a co-championship. I'd like to start by giving the De Desire, Determination, and Dedication Award. This award I'm giving to two boys today, tonight that have contributed four years to this program. They've competed with one another for these four years, and they are both responsible for getting us into the semifinals this year. The first winner is Evan Butler, our goaltender, who had a 2.18 goals against average and was named to the All-State Honorable Mention. And then Chris Sullivan, our other goaltender who has had a 2.28 goals against average with over a 90% save. Dedication, desire, determination awards. Again, Evan Butler, Chris Sullivan. The next award is the coach's award. This young man was a four year varsity player. He's, he's the epitome of a team player. He has outstanding character and leadership abilities. He's well respected by his teammates and his coaches. This year's Coach's Award goes to Aaron Pratt. The next award is our MVP award as selected by his teammates. This young man was a three-year starter. He led the team in scoring this year with 20, uh, 29 points, 17 goals, 12 assists. He was named the second team All-State. The MVP this year's team is Patrick Madden. Thanks, Pete. I tried my best to get you back on time. Thank you, Gary. It's hot in this suit. <laughs> Next up, head coach Scott Sizek, and he'll announce the award recipients for the girls ice hockey team. Come in, Coach Sizek. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Go right ahead. On behalf of Phil DeVita, Greg Holt, I'd like to present uh, the awards for tonight for the 2019-2020 Bishop Girton Girls Hockey Awards presentation. First of all, I'd like to thank our seniors. We have three seniors out of the 21 players. I'd like to thank Brianna DeFelice, Annalise Reed, and Riley Nagosian on a great season and wish them well in their future endeavors. I'd like to tell you a little bit about the season. We, uh, we started off a little slow and um, they came together as a team, playing as a team and uh, progressing through the season. Uh, they ended the season really strong, and we lost in um, in the playoffs to the number one Concord team in a uh, great back-and-forth battle. The first award tonight is going to be a coach's award for the most impactful new player. This player had nine goals and nine assists. She had 18 points on the season. Uh, she had a great attitude. Uh, she's ferocious and tenacious on the ice. Her work ethic is um, is is awesome. I can't say enough about this player. She's a uh, two winter sport, and she was able to um, play competitively in both of the sports that she was at. So, for the most impactful new player, I'd like to uh, present Catherine Simpson with the coaches award. There you go, Kate. Thanks a lot. Great season. Next award is going to go to the Defensive Player of the Year. Uh, this player is a second-year player. Um, before that, she didn't play uh, hockey at all. Uh, her work ethic and her attitude are unmatched. She um, she gets work with her. She she works with her her father, and she gets additional play time uh, with a private team. Uh, like I said, her, her work ethic and her attitude are, are unmatched on the team. Nobody works harder than she does. She was able to post a 3.86 goals against the average, uh, which allowed us to stay in all the games and give us an opportunity to win the game. So the defensive player of the year goes to Sarah King, our goalie. There you go, Sarah. Great job. The next Award's gonna to go to the Offensive Player of the Year. This player is one of the smallest players on the team, but she, she's one of the biggest players on the team. 
She got 15 goals. She got 14 assists. She got 29 points in 18 games this year. She's definitely a leader on the team. She led all forwards uh, with, with points. Uh, she's a great combination of goals and assists with the 15 goals and 14 assists. Uh, she shows her ability to be a great team player by both going to the net and sharing the goals with uh, showing that she provides assists and plays as a team player. She's one of our captains, and she's the leader of our offense this year. That's going to be Brookie Brody. Brooke, here you go. Great job, Brooke. This leads us to our last award. It's our most valuable player award. Um, I can't say enough about this player. Um, this player can play any position. She's a leader on the team. She played defense mostly this year, but she's played forward for us previously. Uh, no matter where she is, if she's on the ice, she can be a difference maker in the game. This player plays with passion and desire. Her biggest growth this year was her maturity and her decision-making abilities, which cut down on the amount of penalties that she's had this year. Um, playing defense, she actually posted 24 goals and 20 assists for 44 points. She reached her 100 point mark for her high school career on her fifth frame of her junior year, which is a feat in itself. She made first team All-State this year as a junior. And this award here for most valuable player goes to Lindsey Hult. Great job, Lindsey. Nice year. Nice year. Pete, back to you. Okay, Scott, thank you. And now I'd like to ask Coach Wendy Gettle to come forward and announce the award recipients for Girls Alpine Ski Team and for the third year in a row, the Division I State Championship Boys Alpine Ski Team. Come on in, Wendy. Thanks, Pete. Looking like you're uh, safe at school there. Um, oh. I've timed this down to six minutes. I hope I can keep it there. I know my, assistant, <laughs> my assistant Rob is uh, here as well uh, and is joining in and uh, um, waiting to hear, I think. <laughs> um, starting with the girls team. The girls team was a young team this year with just one returning junior and four returning sophomores. The girls welcomed four new members to the team Everyone worked hard, practice after practice, race after race, gaining confidence and skill. In the end, we had our most successful championship since 2013, with a fifth place in the GS and a seventh in the slalom for seventh place overall. Their future looks bright indeed. The MVP award is my first award. By tradition, the MVP of the ski team is the racer who has accrued the greatest number of points throughout the regular racing season into the championships. Thus the MVP rewards the athlete who skis well from the first race of the season all the way through. My girls MVP not only scored in every single race this season, she also came in no less than sixth place. At the championships, she qualified for the Muta champions twice over with a fifth in the GS and a sixth in the slalom, amassing 874 points. The girls MVP is junior captain, Kate Simpson. Congratulations, Kate. I also award a 3D award. In lieu of a most improved player, I award a 3D award. The 3D stand for desire, determination and dedication. In short, the desire to improve, the determination to do so and the dedication to make it happen. Fearless and determined, this particular racer bested her previous year's personal best on the very first race and never looked back. By the end of the season, she was the second highest scorer for the girls team in both overall scoring and at the championships. My 3D award winner is sophomore Grace O'Malley. Congratulations, Grace. Moving on to the boys team. The boys Alpine ski team successfully defended their 2018 and 2019 titles to three-peat as division one champions for 2020. Once again, we employed the mantra, just do your job. And each of the boys did just that. 
from the co-carriers to the racers to our amazing parents, everyone just did their job. This was the hardest spot of the three wins. We were down by eight points after the GS, but we knew if each racer just did his job and didn't worry about the other teams, we could get it done. And we did. We had 12 brilliant slalom runs with our top four scores in the top 14 and all six in the top 21. In the end, we won by 10 points over second place Bedford. For my first uh, boys award MVP, after the first race, my boys MVP scored in every race thereafter. At the championships, he took on the prep pressure position of wearing the first bib in both the GS and the slalom. In the slalom, he laid down a perfect first run, only discovered they had failed to capture his time. Reruns are notorious for going badly in ski racing, but he never let the pressure show and delivered an even better run on his second attempt. He went on to win the bronze medal and qualify the Mita champions. Amassing 676 points, my MVP is senior captain, Sam Froyo. I'm awarding a second MVP this year as the top two racers were separated by a single point. This athlete started our day at the championships leading the team with a sixth place finish in the GS. Not content to end the day there, he took fifth in the slalom. I'm not sure he realizes that he was the third most decorated athlete of the day and would have earned the bronze had there been a podium for best overall skier. One point shy of 676, amassing 675 points. My second MVP is sophomore Colin Rathbone. Congratulations, Colin. Coaches award. I award my coaches award to the senior athlete that has given their heart and soul to the team for all four years. The heart and soul of this team is a core group of seniors. As the time came to say goodbye to them, I found it impossible to choose just one to be honored with my coach's award. So with Sam earning an MVP, I'm awarding four coaches awards. My first coaches award is arguably an MVP award as well. This racer has contributed points to our championship wins every year, but saved the best performance for this year when we needed it most. I calculated that without his two finishes in GS and slalom, we would have lost the championship by two points. My MVP coaches award goes to senior captain, Connor Silloway. Congratulations, Connor. Every team needs that athlete who you can turn to if you want to hear it straight. He's that person that a coach can count on to do everything in his power to get any given job done on or off the hill. Most notably in his junior year, this athlete promised to me that he would give me, that if I gave him the last spot in the slalom team, he would deliver. And he did coming in 15th and sealing our win. My second coach's award goes to senior Aiden Johnson. This year's dedication to the team in the sport of ski racing, oh, sorry, this racer's dedication to the team in the sport of ski racing is the stuff of team legends. Over four years, he had near perfect attendance, missing only one event in all of those four years. He worked hard at practices and was always the last one off the hill, only stopping when the course had been pulled. He even joined a weekend program to get more training. Most notably, he did this and maintained his academic excellence, even achieving president's list. My heart and soul coaches award goes to senior Kevin Jelly. Congratulations, Kev. E team racing is about depth. Every team needs that racer who can deliver as promised race after race. For four years, this racer delivered finishes. He anchored all three championship teams giving us the confidence to unleash the other racers, knowing he would deliver a finish when it mattered. This racer knows that being a good teammate matters and that no matter what, you do whatever it takes for the good of the team, whether it's finishing a race or giving your GS suit to another racer. 
My unsung hero coaches award goes to senior Josh Jenkins. Thanks for a great season guys. Parents couldn't have done it without you. Hopefully we get together one more time because I have a lot of medals to hand out from our regular season. Back to you, Pete. Thanks again, Wendy. <laughs> and now for the awards going to the girls swimming and diving team. And for the second year in a row, the division one state champion boys swimming and diving team. Head coach, Christine Russo. Chris, are you there? I'm here. Peter, nice job on the cap and goggles. <laughs> Thanks, Pete. They're okay, a little tight. The boys and girls. <laughs> I'm glad you got it on. <laughs> okay. Boys, girls, and swim and dive team have had another great season. The boys state championships and the girls placed fifth at states. So proud of all the swimmers, divers, coaches, parents who helped make the season a great success. A good shout out to the seniors, Connor, Donahue, Swetha, Donapui, Michaela DeSantos, Julia, Fina, Ju, Julia, Fina Cherio, Sarah Tetesco, and Grace Wang. Thank you for doing your jobs the past four years. We will miss you greatly. My coaches awards for the boys go to three juniors who at stage each won two individual events and were part of two winning relay teams. They're great kids and I'm looking forward to next year. The first one goes to Matthew Crane. Congratulations, Matt. The second one goes to Ivan Dottier. Congratulations, Ivan. And the third one goes to Jack Januario. Congratulations, Jack. I have one more coaches award that goes to our only senior captain who has been a great, has been a key part of the team for the past four years. He won the 200 IM at States and was part of two winning relays. I wanna wish him luck next year. It goes to Connor Donahue. Congratulations, Connor, and thank you. I have girls awards, the girls coaches awards. The first one goes to the junior who broke three BG school records. She broke the 100, 200, and 500 free relay at States. She took away, her sister had three school records. She took two of her sister's school records away. There's only one of Carolyn's records left. We'll see if this girl can get it next year. Um, it goes to Olivia Schuster. Congratulations, Olivia. The second coach's award that I have goes to a swimmer who has given everything she has in every event that she swam for the past four years. She's been a great part of BG Swim and it goes to senior Grace Wang. My last coach's award goes to a key part of BG Swim for the past four years. She also is involved in many groups at BG. She always gives 100% goes to Swetha Donapui. Congratulations, Swetha. Thank you, everybody. And I want to thank BG for this man, my husband. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Back to you, Peter. Thank you, Christine. Uh, let's just keep it there at the uh -huh. Russo household. I think everybody will be happy to see our next presenter, Coach Paul Russo, and he'll be making the presentations to the Division II champion, State state champion wrestling team. Come in, Coach Russo. Thank you, Peter. Mrs. Broda, Principal Strinisty. Nice to see you guys. Guys, it's really nice to be here tonight. Thanks for all your prayers and your well wishes. It means a lot to me. I'm feeling much better. Things are going in the right direction. Thank you. A very special thank you to our assistant coaches, Kurt Rowlett, Chris Rowlett, and Deacon Tommy Moses. We had a terrific year, as Peter said, we were Division II state champs. We were 21 and one in the regular season. We finished fourth in the meter champions. We had an outstanding year. Tonight, I'd like to recognize my seniors for that nice hat there, Peter. My seniors for dedication and commitment to the school, to the wrestling program. They're just unbelievable kids. 
My first coach's award goes to our 132-pound state champ, Steve Bouchard. Our next coach's award goes to our 160-pounder, two-year captain, Matthew Frechette. Our next award goes to a 170-pound state champion, two-year captain, Andrew Ha. Our next award goes to our 285 state champion, Captain Nick Connolly. And my last award doesn't go to a state champion, goes to a senior who probably should have quit. He came in knowing he wasn't going to wrestle or wasn't going to start, I'm sorry. But he came with a great attitude, pushed Matt Frechette to make Matt Frechette the wrestler he is today, worked hard in practice, smiled, dedication to the school, no complaints, just an unbelievable kid. And it was an honor to give this recognition to Joe Homola. Congratulations, Joe. You really, really deserve it. And that's all I have to say. Guys, it's really nice to be here. God bless everybody. And thank you very much. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Paul. And now making the presentations to the members of our boys varsity basketball team, head coach, John Fisher. Coach, you there? I'm here, Pete. Can you hear me? Go right ahead. You sound great. All right. Three quick thoughts on a fantastic boys basketball season. First, I want to thank our supporters. Special shout out to our families. Um, especially our parent group that provided so many uh, memorable times for the, uh, the players and the staff. Um, the second thing is I want to um, thank all our folks at BG, the staff members, um, our trainers, um, and most importantly, the nest. If you are in the nest during some ba boys basketball games this season, I hope you, uh, you step outside tonight and give yourselves a big, oh yeah, because uh, you were a huge part of our success this year. Um, so all three of those groups were very important to our success. Second, I want to thank our coaching and bookkeeping staff. Uh, you may have seen, heard it in the newspaper, um, but our coaching staff was voted staff of the year uh, by the other coaches uh, of the New Hampshire Basketball Coaching Association. So I'd like to personally thank Will Horn, Tim Lunn, Chris Cameron, Dylan Mullen, and Kevin Bonney, and our scorekeepers, Walter Kaczynski, uh, Brendan Baker. Huge part of the year. Uh, thank you all. Um, and now my favorite part is talking about the season and the players. A quick recap. The beginning of the season, uh, the players know. Uh, we were, we were uh, the preseason pick at 16. 16 out of 22 teams in Division I. And then we proceeded to go 14 and 4, ending the season in fourth. But our most telling statistic in, in those 18 games, regular season games we played this year, eight different players led us in scoring. And we out-rebounded almost every team we played. This is a gritty, tough, but most importantly, unselfish team. Probably the best I've ever seen. What they accomplished this year was tremendous, and they were an absolute blast to be around. Recognizing individuals with a crowd like this that was all about team and not about individuals is challenging. Saying that, I'm sure the guys will be happy for each other. I've got a couple of uh, awards. Um, Obviously, um, we have an academic school and the uh, state all academic team is a, is a, a nice milestone, a nice um, award for these folks. So I'd like to talk about our all academic team members. They were Dan Dockrell, Ryan Stack, T and Graham, Lucas Baker, John Sullivan, Mason Carroll, and Kyle Baker. A lot to be proud of for your academic and athletic accomplishments. Our most valuable player um, award this year um, goes to a player that um, led the team in scoring more than any other player. Um, frequently drew the, uh, the best defensive player on the other team. And he was also voted uh, second team All-State. I believe he had the seventh most uh, votes in the state uh, for player. Um, our MVP this year is Dylan Samuswaso. Congratulations, Dylan. The other three awards are all coaches awards. It's incredibly difficult for me to separate these three. I think the most telling moment with these three was their speeches in the locker room after our last game. It's something I will always remember. I'm positive no one videotaped it. They were talking from the heart. It was uh, truly one of the finest moments in athletics I've ever been a part of. I'd like to give three coaches awards this year. 
I'd like to give them to Kyle Baker, Mason Carroll, and Sam Mullet, our three seniors. Fine work, gentlemen. Um, you, really, you really set the tone uh, for the players going forward. So just a last thank you to all our players, our fans, our parents. And until next season, I'll see all of you when I'm in the nest. Thanks, Pete. Thank you, Coach. Congrats on the, that award as well as one of the best coaching staffs and programs in the state. Our final presentation for the evening is the girls varsity basketball team. Coach Brad Creek is our coach and he's here to announce the award winners to the members of the division one state champion girls basketball team who have captured their fifth NHI AA division one crown fifth year in a row. Come in coach Creek. Thank you, Pete. Uh, we appreciate uh, getting this all together tonight under, under trying circumstances. Our program, as you know, enjoyed another very successful season. <laughs> uh, you know, initially led by, by our JV program, who won their first state title in a number of years under Coach Purcell. And the varsity, who went 17-1 during the regular season and entered the state tournament as the number one seed and favorite to win our fifth straight state title. Unfortunately, the tournament as we all know, it was canceled just prior to the state semifinal games. So we get to share this year's championship with another school. We'll remember two things about this team. First, and by far most important, this team had the best chemistry and togetherness of any we've coached in our five years in the program, which is no small feat given we were integrating talented young freshmen into a senior-laden team. From day one, each of these young ladies decided to take care of each other, become a team, and we're a family in every sense. Second, this year's team culminated a truly remarkable four-year run for this year's senior class. This class has distinguished itself as one of the most successful, not only in program history, but also in the last quarter of a century in the New Hampshire high school girls basketball scene. A couple of highlights about this remarkable class. First, their 84 career wins make them by far the winningest in program history. Second, they enjoyed a 72 and two career record against New Hampshire competition and did not lose a game in state after the fifth game of their sophomore season. Finally, and most impressive, the 2020 senior class became only the fourth class in New Hampshire girls high school history to win four straight state titles. So in recognition of this amazing <clears throat> accomplishment of the amazing accomplishments of this class, who as a group never cared about their individual achievements, but only about the success of their teammates in the program. Prevent to present one collective coaches award to the six seniors who comprise this year's graduating class. And they are Addie Smith, Aria O'Connell, Brenna Parquette, Bree Wilcox, Aaron Carney, and Hannah Muchmore. Ladies, congratulations on an unbelievable career and thank you for everything you've done for the program. You leave the program in a far better place than you found it. Pete, back to you. Thanks, Jim. Gave it to all the seniors. Great. Thanks again, Coach. That is a really an amazing stat. 72 and 2. Amazing. Great job to you and all the girls and the coaching staff. So that just about concludes our evening. I do want to thank you all for logging in. And I hope you had a little uh, levity and enjoyed our, our evening's presentation. We all know BG is a, is a special place, but it's you, the students, who make it that way. We love you and we miss you and we hope to see you again very soon. So let's do our best, buckle up for whatever kind of spring season the NHIA chooses to attempt to conduct and we'll see you again very, very soon. Thank you all again for logging in.